Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Shadowrun Hong Kong. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he chose to join me today, as uh, we are dealing with some health issues right now, I think. Uh, as we entered... As we entered... Um, Ehoi, uh, we were assailed by this feeling. An incredible tightness in your chest. I wonder what it is. Is it something to do with the dreams? It might have something to do with the dreams. It feels like your heart is being crushed under the foot of a giant, your vision goes grey, and your sense of balance disappears. Gradually, blood rushes in to refill the organ, inflating it like a balloon. What? What organ? What? What is going on? Well, let's try to catch our breath. You gasp for air. It doesn't come. Your breath shallows out, thins, makes you gasp like a suffocating fish. Your chest contracts again and again as you struggle to take in breath. You stumble forward and every cell in your body seems to vibrate. The energy thumbs inside of you, pulsating, building up an unbearable crescendo. And then you're on the other side of it. Oh boy. You find yourself standing in a familiar courtyard, the walled city. You're back in the walled city, just like in your dreams. You can taste the stench of the place, the mildew and plaster and wet dog stink of the slum. I hate wet dog stink. I hate that. It's, yeah, a dream. This has to be a dream. You try to blink away the image of the walled city to blot out the sounds and sted stench of the slum. You pinch yourself. You don't wake. That never works. That never works. Of course we don't wake up. The crumbling facades of tenement buildings lean into one another above you, closing in and on either side and creating a narrow walkway. Just like in your dreams, there's nowhere else to go. Nowhere but forward, down the path, ahead. <clears throat> okay, let's stay where we are, see what happens. You plant your feet and wait. Wait for something to change. For the walled city to fade away and the Hihoi docks to return. You wait for what feels like hours. Nothing changes. Well, yeah, let's not go for what I mean, what kind of a wuss do you think I am? Let's start walking. You let your legs carry you forward. You feel a creeping sense of certainty in the back of your mind and it tells you that it will taste can this same walk hundreds of times before the sense of claustrophobia mounts and builds with every step you take it feels like you're worming your way towards down forward down a long dark tunnel the humidity of the place sticks to your skin as you proceed deeper into the walled city a low rumble fills the air the noise of enormous gears in motion you feel hollow empty and with every step you take you can feel that emptiness growing an unbearable yearning, unlike any hunger you've ever known. Hmm. Let's stop. Let's see what happens. You stop walking, plant your feet. The world stops moving around you. Close your eyes and breathe a sigh of relief. When your eyes open again, you find yourself moving forward. You don't remember telling your legs to walk, but that's when what they're doing. Carrying you forward, deeper into the walled city. Just like you did in your dreams. Just as you always have. Off in the distance, an alien silhouette beckons you, beckons to you. It's her, the tall, slender thing from your dreams, the elusive figure that you've always been moving toward, but you can never quite reach. The crowd of local lines, the path ahead, kneeling in su supplication. They look emaciated, all skin and bones, clothed head to toe in dirty rags. Let's examine the kneeling figures. You stare at the nearest of the kneeling figures, a wiry man in his late twenties. He locks eyes with you. Slowly, his mouth yawns open. The man has no teeth. They've been pulled and recently, from the looks of it. His gums are a bloody, pitted mess. As you stare into the back void of his mouth, his tongue comes lolling out. It looks like it was caught in an industrial accident, a swollen, twisted slab of meat. The corners of, his, of the young man's mouth twitch upwards in a ghastly smile. Man, what happened to you? The man with the ruined tongue doesn't respond. He kneels in silence, staring as, as your feet carry you past him. Seconds later, it fades from view. Your legs carry you deeper and deeper into the beating heat of the tenement. If you, uh, if you haven't reached the center yet, you must be close. It's incredib incredibly hot and humid in here. The sweat rolls down your body in sheets. Your thoughts go hazy with the heat, and a dim sense of unease takes root in, in the pit of your stomach. Oh, uh, let's focus on the uneasy feeling, see what that is. You try to concentrate on the un on the unease that you are feeling, but you find it impossible to focus. The omnipresent sound of grinding gears isn't helping. Looking up, you can see where the noise is coming from. A 
hatch. The same door you saw in your nightmare back when all of this began. The marking on the door are legible now. A single word is faded in faded yellow paint. Prosperity. Suddenly, and possibly, the alien figure that you've been moving toward is standing right in front of you. At the same time, your vision finally clears and ice water runs through your veins. The walled city isn't a slum at all. It's in an enormous gaping maw in the building are a forest of crooked teeth. The thing reaches for you with inhuman speed and grace. It plunges fingers of polished ivory into your mouth. Slowly, terribly, it begins to wrench your jaw open. You can feel your teeth splinter and break and... Oh. Have we woken up? Who's this guy? Is that... What? Is that Duncan? Huh, I feel like I've seen this guy before. Rough fingers on your shoulders snap you back to reality. The hand cl clenches with a vice-like crisp grip and yanks you backwards off your feet. You come crashing down to the floor of Hee Hoi MTR station. You can feel a rush of wind just in front of you, a passing train. What's wrong with you, Seal? That's Strangler Bao. Hi. Anti Shang's lost too many runners already. Besides, there are cleaner ways to end your life than jumping in front of a train. Oh. So he just saved my life. I think that... I think whatever... I think whatever I was dreaming of, or whoever, whoever was giving me that dream was trying to kill me. Yeah. Man, thank you, I owe you my life. Yeah, you're right. Now get up and get back to that floating wreck that you sleep in. I don't get to die in here. You don't get to die in here unless Mrs. Chang, Mrs. Chang says so. Yeah, thank you, man. It's this guy. Oh, boy, that was dense. I was reading that, I was getting goosebumps. It doesn't... <laughs> it doesn't really help that I'm trying to act and just... Oh, doing the best job I can at reading that stuff, but in man. Oh boy. Uh, hi Maximum, how are you doing? Uh, what do we need to do? Let's go back, let's tell... Let's tell... Uh, Duncan about this, all this. Can I go back there? Let me go back there. Please let me go back there. Why won't you get... Oh, come on! Okay, whatever. Maybe there's nobody in there besides it's not really a big deal. We use the WASD keys, the WASD keys. Let's go in here. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I have a lot. Oh, I was not expecting this much karma. Oh boy, I want to spend some of this. I want to spend some of this right now. So I want to spend in this, uh, but I also want to spend in here. So I need 14. Of course, that's gonna not gonna be enough for both. But I'm, I'm gonna focus on this. So, we got Socialite and Academic. Socialite, bleh, I couldn't care less for that. Let's go with Academic. And I think that's gonna be the end of our Charisma career, I guess. Um, so, I'm gonna increase my quickness. And, of course, as soon as I get 7 Karma, I'm gonna increase... Uh, I'm gonna get that Chain Shot, because that looks like an awesome, awesome little ability. Uh, so, let's go with uh, into the Mahjong Parlor. See what awaits us in here. Yeah, everyone's in here. Hi! How's it going? I almost died back there, but I'm fine now. You walk through the Mahjong Parlor... Oh, the walk through the Mahjong Parlor is punctuated by the tantalizing smell of coconut and fried confection. Your crew surrounds Kindly Shang, watching uncomfortably as she peels small egg-shaped delicacies from a waffle-like pastry and pops them into her mouth. Each time she does, her eyes close in ecstasy and soft sound comes from her throat. There you are, Sil! Your crew here tells me that you were able to locate and interrogate Plastic-Faced Man. They haven't told me his current disposition, however. I assume everything went as I instructed? Yes, Auntie. We took one of Josephine's pieces off the board. Uh... Hmm... Yeah, let's go with that. Kindly Shang's nostrils flare with a sharp inhale and her eyes glisten in triumph. That was for you, Nightjar! Yeah, that's her revenge right there. I trust you got something useful out of it? Uh, well, I did. We got plenty. Wu sounds eager. He gave us a data dump and on everything he knew about Prosperity Tower. First hand info. Josephine Tsang's headquarter? Oh, that could be useful, I suppose. What do you intend on doing with it? Well, we're gonna rescue Raymond. He's alive, Auntie. Just like I said he was. Josephine's holding him in there. She's going some she's doing something to his brain. Something to his brain? Oh, what is that old bitch up to now? 
based on the memories Mr. Plastic showed us, it looks like she's trying to rewire some memories using something called AZIST, Artificial Sensory Induction System Technology. It allows the user to record process and feed synthetic sensory input to the brain. Like a SimSense chip? Yes, auntie. It's the technology that led to SimSense. It's also what allows deckers to enter the matrix and grants triggers a neural connection to their drones. An expert ASIS technician could alter someone's personality, memory, even identity. Oh, that... I'm guessing experts like that don't grow on trees. Definitely not. Changing someone's memories requires a world-class expert in ASIS and a massive amount of computing power. I'm not sure exactly what they're going or what they're doing to him, but I'm guessing that his mom wants him to forget something. Or to remember it differently, maybe. Yeah, so... Yeah, we, we, we got to get Raymond before he isn't Raymond anymore. That means a run on Prosperity Tower. Isabel I have and I have been studying the data that Plastic Faced Man gave us about it. Looks uh, lots of good intel to mine there. Really? Hmm. So how do we stop this Asus thing from rewiring Raymond? All we know is that an Asus device is located in Lab 12. It's the only one in the building. Now, I doubt that Grandma will just hand over the passcodes to her system if we ask nicely. So, we'll need a Decker to, to access the assist device and eject him from the system safely before she scrambles his brain. Yeah, okay, so what does the Decker need to do to eject him safely? Like I said, we don't know. We're going to have to improvise. Figure that out when we get there. So, how do we make our approach? Fortunately, Prosperity Tower is one of Tseng's lower security locations. Really? That's weird. Huh. It's mostly administrative marketing, that sort of thing. Oh, that's good. Mr. Bao, give the runners those old Tseng security passes you used on that hijacking last year. Ah, yes, Mr. Cheng, they'll get them. Those passes should get you through the lobby. You'll still have to explain your presence, still, so don't expect just to walk on through. Yeah, so what about... That junk data you held on to uh, after the Wuxing run, Isabel. Anything in there we can use? Good thinking, and I'm already ahead of you. I scoured the leftover Wuxing paperwork and found a way to change our status to special couriers. Couriers? Couriers. Uh, we can use that to pose as a third-party Wuxing uses to uh, deliver important packages. Oh, that'll work for a while, but we can't expect to stay in cover for long. One way or another, things are gonna get hot. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, nah, 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 the loading dog sounds like ju just the edge we need. Let's do it. Okay, I'll get us booked into Tseng's system and print off some matching papers. We'll need a van to make it look legit. Bow? I'll consider it done. Okay, talk to me about the security setup. How do we get to Raymond? The key to this operation are, are the three security stations located on different floors. The matrix systems in these security stations are the command and control hubs for the entire building's security. As such, they're the best place to find out where Raymond Black is being held. Oh, that's... ha! Huh, that's all we got on this location? All we know is that it's being held somewhere called Lab 12, but where that is or how to get in there is something we will need to figure out on site. If things go hostile, the best thing to do is to get an alarm panel or a matrix security node and shut things down. You are noticed we'll have a brief window to get the link to the alarm system. If we do that, it will isolate the whole floor from the security system. The rest of the building won't know what's happening there. If the alarm goes off and we cut the link to the alarm system, we can spoof the system, tell it we've moved on to another location. Oh, that might work once or twice, but if we spoof too many alarms, they'll figure it out. Okay, so how long is this? It doesn't really matter. So, what about guards? Quantity training? Oh, start a corp security for the most part, but Sang has a rapid response squad for high priority events. That'd be us. Oh. Us? What do you mean? Is Gobat right? Do you think an intrusion into Lab 12 would quite classify? Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I guess what that means. Do you think uh, an intrusion on Lab 12 would classify as a high priority event? Yeah, judging by the way Grandma Sang took our Ke Carter, Gunshot, and Nightjar. I'd say she isn't interested in anyone getting anywhere near his son. Except to face Tsang's expect to face Tsang's elite security once we find once we find him. Okay. So what else do you have uh, on uh, security stations themselves? Staffing, weaknesses? Only one thing worth mentioning. The only way into a security station is with a key card. And guards on each floor carry a card to the station on that floor. 
So we can get a card by taking them out, but uh, but there may be other ways of getting cards. Like I said, security stations are the key to this operation. They provide multiple opportunities to exploit the system and determine how to approach the rest of our incursion. Okay, so the security stations are high priority targets. And we want to take them fast before they have a chance to respond. So which security station do we hit first? Oh, no way to know. We'll need to take them one by one and use it to determine our next step. It's like we have direct. It's not. It's like we have directions to go find a map, or it's not like we have directions to go find a map. Is it? Wait, I don't. Anyway, uh, so how long is this brief window to cut the alarm? Maybe thirty seconds, maybe less. If the network isn't cluttered with traffic, there's a failsafe so security doesn't stampede all over the building. If uh, it's 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 there as safe as a failsafe. Okay, so. If a janitor forgets to close the door. Okay, so that's all I need to know about security. Let's hope it's enough to give us an edge. Yeah, that's all I need to know. Okay. Oh, one other thing. While I was helping Duncan verify as much uh, of this data as I could, I decided to collect our marker with Bull and his team of runners. Oh, I remember him. Good call. Yeah. Uh, well, we all we need all the help we can get. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, those guys were nice. Turns out, Bull and our runner friends hit Sang a few months back. They were ran smash and, dra and, and grab for another corp, but they got a quick scan of the building's matrix security before they rabbited. They gave us, a data gave us data flags that pinpoint where the security nodes are located inside of Sang's system. So when we jack into a security station, we'll be able to make a direct attack on the security node. That could just buy us the seconds we'll need to cut the alarm link. Ah, nice work. Family cuts in, licking her fingers with loud smacking. She's been hitting, <laughs> hitting all this time. <laughs> One more thing, Sil. While you're in here in our headquarters, look for anything we can use to incriminate or embarrass Josephine Tsang. I want dirt, something I can feed to an acquaintance on the executive council, someone who stands to gain from it. Hmm. Okay, uh... Right after I ask your father. Of course, my sweetie. Of course. Yeah, she's okay with that. Now go enjoy Prosperity Tower and give Josephine Sang my regards. Oh, is this gonna be the last mission? I feel that the game is a bit too short if indeed it is. Meh, I don't know. It's been fun. Again, four karma, that's good. Not enough for me to get that ability that I want, but enough to get closer to it, I guess. Anyway, let's get um, back to actually. Let's, yeah, let's speak with Duncan. I want to speak with Duncan and see what he, what he has to say about all this. Last time I spoke with him, it was pretty mad. I was pretty pissed about this whole situation. But then again, I mean, now that he knows... Can I sleep? Uh, now that he knows that... Um, Dun that uh, Raymond is alive. The clanking of metal followed by grunts and a hard ex exercise erupt from the hatchway of Wu's cabin. The first thing you notice when you enter is its renewed cleanliness. Cleanliness. The food cans are gone and his equipment is neatly laid out on his bed. Everything is in place. The next thing you notice is the smell. It's like a middle school locker room in July. Wu finishes his jumping jacks and grabs a towel off his bunk. His exposed flesh gleams with perspiration. Hey, hey, how's it going? Better. He scrubs his sweaty head with the towel. Let myself wallow for a while. But now it's time to turn things around. We have to work. We have work to do. What's your deal? Well, uh, still thinking about Edward Sang? Eh, compartmentalize them. Edward Sang is a topic in a file cabinet in my head. I'm only thinking about Raymond now, finding out what happened to him. What really happened to him? Uh, taking it a moment at a time, huh? Yeah, that's me, Mr. Focus. <laughs> okay, so what do you, uh, we're, we're getting close to the plastic faced man, Duncan. I know, I haven't stopped thinking about him since we first saw him in that video, the one where he attacked Raymond in Tea House. Listen, Kalim, I I'm gonna I'm not gonna press you to make me to take me with you when you head out to snatch him. You take the right people for the job and then you get the job done, okay? But I want to be there when you interrogate him. Oh what? Where are Yeah, I feel that this might have been a a discussion from before the last mission, but anyway. I want, it, uh, I want to be there when you interrogate him. I want to hear what he has to say with my own ears. Are you gonna have a problem with that? Oh, of course not. Oh, good. We're brothers. I'd hate to have to mess you up. <laughs> like I said, 
you can take me with you or the, on the run or not it's your call but i intend to be there for the fun of for the fun part so you think this is a game uh, do i look like an idiot no i don't think this is a game this is the guy who knows what the hell is going on the one who may have killed raymond and i'm gonna squeeze him until i find out what he knows yeah okay we'll do what we've got to do to get the answers we need yeah i'm right so you told me we were resentful when I took off, but maybe it was about how Raymond handled that thing with Double Tray. Nah, it was about you disappearing for eight years without a word. But we're past that now. But that was a messed up night. A lot of things happened and I wouldn't be surprised if some, I don't know, emotions got jumbled together. About the fight with Raymond? Yeah, mostly. We'd butted at it before and broken plenty of his rules in the past, but I'd never seen him so disappointed. I'm still not sure why. Why don't you walk through it from the beginning? Start with when Lockjaw showed up and at Ray's house. Uh, so this was 2045, years after the summer we moved in with Raymond. We hadn't seen DT or Lockjaw or any other gang in before uh, forever. Raymond's rules, no contact with our hoodlum friends. No visiting the squat to check up on them. Right, he insisted on a clean break. Exactly, he wanted us focused on our future, not bogged down in the past mistakes. The way I remember it, we woke up in the middle of the night and there was there was Lockjaw, standing in our room, covered in blood. My first thought was that Raymond was gonna kill us. Can you imagine? There's a teenage, salish Indian covered in, a, in blood in our bedroom. My first thought was that I might get in trouble for it. Well, Raymond was an intimidating guy when we were young. Yeah, isn't that weird? I towered over him, and it just didn't matter. The little man just had that way of looking at, her, at you, a tone. Uh, so Lockjaw's bleeding all over our room, and we're you're whispered to yelling, Where's DT? What happened to Double Tray? Five minutes later, we're dressed in black and are all on our way back to the Barons. Yeah, man, we had to. Of course. Wasn't for if it wasn't for Double Tray, neither of us would be here right now. But he was the one who took us to the Steen Center, introduced us to Raymond. Man, that was a messed up night. The 162s had overrun the Leary squad, had the position to take on the nukes. Banzo and the Tusk were bleeding out. The Hernandez family, Alf Eden and Lil Joe, that streetwalker with the electric face eyelashes, uh, false eyelashes, was lying on the floor in two parts. Yeah, but we got Double Dre out alive. Yeah, was the only one though. And still hear Lockjaw screaming as the ghouls took him down. When the 162s wanted something, they did not play. Anyway, all that was lit. Uh, all of that was just lit up. But still, I, it speaks to my state of mind that night, when I could, when I wouldn't back down when Raymond met us at the door. Well, neither neither one of you would budge. We both had the strength of the righteous. You and I had broken his rules out of loyalty, out of gratitude. You just didn't get that. Yeah, the man never understood where we came from. Now we know why. It wasn't just some do-gooder who took in some street kids. It was a rich guy used to getting his way. That's what made him so furious. I don't know, Duncan. I think it's because he thought we were playing him. I never thought of it that way. He didn't just think we had broken his rules or that we lacked sleep. But he thought that we were still we were still street hoods. That we were milking him, using him. No wonder he was so angry. He felt betrayed. But you, you were able to get him to calm down and see reason him to see my side of the story and all he said was that one thing the thing he said his mother used to say to him when he was about was being obstinate what the hell was it hmm this sounds lame let's see listen to what you know instead of what you fear that's good people do not listen with the intent to understand they listen with the intent to reply most people, most people. Yeah, that's actually kind of true. Let's go with this. I feel that this one is prettier. Listen to what you know instead of what you fear. Yeah. That was what you fear thing really got to him. Uh, still not sure why. Using his mother's words on him really did the trick. I wonder what kind of childhood he had. But the way he looked at you after that. Crazy. He was furious with you, but all I did quote his mother. But all I did is quote his mother and I got the big chill. Uh, maybe he's got mummy issues. And who knows? Maybe I've got a few daddy issues to deal with, too. Guess I should try and keep an open mind when we see him. 
Ah, man. <laughs> These guys had a messed up childhood. Anyway, what do you think about the last run? Uh, you mean extracting the plastic, plastic faced man? I knew we'd eventually find that guy, but getting the information out of him before he brain wipe was tense. At least we know that Raymond's alive now. I fucking knew it. Yep. Uh, I was right there with you. Yeah, I'm glad you had my back on that. Well, now we need to now we need to get him out of Prosperity Tower before Grandma reprograms him. Oh man, she sounds like a piece of work, doesn't she? Maybe we'll get to say hi when we burst into her headquarters. I want to see if there's a family resemblance before I drop her. Anyway, enough about that. Need anything else? Nah, see you later. Anytime. Thank you, Duncan. I am out of this place. I don't need to sleep, do I? I don't think I do. No, I don't. Anyway, let's get out. We have uh, no missions here. Let's check our emails, though. Oh, oh, there it is. Mission computer. Huh? Inbox. Hope it helps. What? From Dreamland. Good luck with your... Oh, no. What? Oh, it's from Dreamland. Yeah, good luck with your old what happened to my father thing. Rough deal. Nothing else. I hope the people responsible get what's coming to them and that my neural inhibitor program helps you come get some payback. Thank you, Dreamland. You're a doll. Uh, anyway, let's post pay data for sale. I can't post any more because I don't have any. Let's walk away. Let's go to our next mission. Let's do that. Actually, it's not a shadow. It's not a run or shadow run or whatever, however you, you call it. It is a. It is. It could be the last mission. I don't know if the game ends with us rescuing or finding out what happened to Raymond Black. Maybe he's maybe he's a bad guy. I don't know. I have no idea. He could. It would, would be cool. It'd be cool if he was a bad guy. I mean, that would be surprising. Enter the MTR state. Ooh, who are you? I mean, human refugee? Let's, let's talk with them. Hi. What's going on? A pair of men refugees from the lock, from the looks of them, stand uh, stand near the city entrance. They're absorbed by the conversation. Voice is low. The elf sways nervously as he speaks, but the human is steadfast. His gravely, gravely words are harder to make out than the elves, but you can hear the uh, agitation in them. Neither man seems aware of your presence. Telling you, first chance we get, we gotta get out of your native country. Things are so backed up, even in the walled city, we're gutted and clean tomorrow. We'd still be wading through the fallout. Prejudice wouldn't just disappear. I know, I know, you're right. You always are. I spoke to my sister, she's on board. It didn't take much convincing either. Those few of us who know about the monsters don't want to be anywhere near the city. Things like that. Leave a mark on a place. It'll never be right again. Monsters? You get. What? Did I just. Hear something about monsters? M m monsters? No, 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 no. You must have misheard me. M m no monsters here. Only corporate tyrants. W what's the only thing you hear? Monsters? Nah. Oh, that's right. Monsters. What? Oh, the Yama Kings. Oh, it's all right, Lorne. Might as well start talking about it. Not everyone is going to believe us, but those who do can prepare themselves. Like us. Starting as a, it started as a whisper, a rumor. The Yama Kings are coming to feast. Coming to feast on us. The walled city. Well, we took it for what it was. Superstitious bullshit. That is, until things started happening. Now the walled city's always been in our... Uh, now, the walled city's always been its own kind of hell. But these last few months, somehow, things started getting worse. People got more aggressive, others started to spiral emotionally, and our dreams grew more intense, more frightening. It's the Yama Kings, we're sure of it. They're going to destroy our souls and eat our bodies. We have to believe, but... There are so many people who can't. I, I just wish we could take them all, Aaron. Impossible, Lorne. Most, most we can do is save ourselves. Let's just concentrate on getting out of a, out of alive. All right. So now you know, monsters, Yama Kings, are descending upon us from their ethereal thrones, coming to rip our essence apart. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Do what you think is best. If leaving this place put, uh, behind puts your minds at ease, then go for it. Thanks, stranger. Yeah, let's ask this and try and enforce what's going on. One of Kindly's enforcers bars a path from the walled city into Hawaii, blocking the wall walkway with his body. A woman in a ragged shawl stands in front of him, her hands clasped, begging to be let through. He doesn't move. Please, you have to let me through. My husband and children are already in Hawaii. I need to meet them. I need to have to. Nice try, but back off. 
You don't get in here. Nobody else does. Yeah, well. Uh, so what's going on? I don't... Hmm. Yeah, you should probably listen to what he says. His boss owns this town. Tell, then tell his boss that she's wrong. Like, please, I... I have family to find. I don't know your... Oh, this is the enforcer. I don't know your family, woman. You probably don't even have one. I, on the other hand, do have people in here, oi. And if I disobey Auntie Shang, what happens to them won't be pretty. Uh, so why does Kindly have care about refugees passing through here, oi? Uh, if, I, if they were content to pass through, she probably wouldn't. That isn't what these people do. They get out and they try to stay here. With everything that's going down, the last thing that Kindly wants to have to worry about is the population of Hiroi suddenly tripling. So we aren't taking anybody. Period. Oh, big bastard. You won't let us through? I'll come back with so many others that you can't help to stop us. We can stay in the walled city, not with what's coming. No, we won't. Yeah, you be my guest, woman. Bring as many friends as you like. I'll make sure to have a bullet for each one of you. Eh, this is not gonna go well for them. This is not gonna go well for them. Anyway, for now I'm gonna cut the episode. We'll, um, we'll continue this mission on the next one. I am Colonel RPG, and this has been Shadowrun Hong Kong. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this series. And hopefully stick with me to the end, because I think we might be reaching the end of the game. Um, but for now, I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye!